Hey there. So, I want to spend some time today talking about my own experience implementing the Martin Squares algorithm. I actually implemented this once in the past in C-sharp, and then hard drive crashed, and I forgot the name of the algorithm, and just kind of lost it. And just, I stumbled across it recently, I don't remember, even remember why. This website here is a great demonstration of what's going on. But uh, basically, it's a, it's, a diff it's a way of plotting a function of two equations. It's like a... It's like a, we're all taught in algebra how to plot a function of it, like y equals n times x plus b. That's pretty easy to plot. Another way of writing it is like f of x equals n times x plus b. But uh, to plot a circle, a couple equations for that. The one that has always puzzled me the most is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And the problem is, how do you how do you plot that without solving for x or y? Because if you tell the computer how to do this, I mean, looking at this, I can tell you it's like y equals plus or minus square root of r squared minus x squared. I can't easily programmatically tell a computer how to do this, and then it gets even more complicated if you start to, like, throwing curveballs at it. Like, how do you solve for y? It just, uh, it gets weird. It's better if we can just throw the equation as is into a system and have the computer apply it. But this is a really neat algorithm, and recommend you visiting this website if you wanted to explore this marching squares. It gives a great definition of the entire thing and how it, like, calculates the, the value of the equation over a field, how based off of the points of the different corners, what, which line you have to draw, how to... It doesn't give you all the math, but it kind of steps you through the process of what, what each step looks like. The final step is doing a linear linear inter interpolation between the squares to try to smooth it out. And it's like from there, I stepped over to this site, which was referenced, which has much better description of the math involved. Lots and lots of math. One of the core bits of this math is like you have the equation I just showed you, x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared equals r squared. Model of all the points inside or on the boundary, and then how to turn that into an equation that's like, you basically need all your variables on one side of the equation. So it can output a single scalar value. And yeah, I, I can totally recommend you stepping through this site yourself and trying to implement this in your language of choice if you have a mind to it. So uh, it's pretty satisfying to play around with. But uh, skipping over to the code I've been building, I'm going to show you the result first. The performance isn't quite as good as what you'd get in JavaScript. But it works. I don't know what tricks JavaScript is playing. I mean, if I could run this this uh, system through a shader, I could probably get it running a lot faster. We're not working with shaders in this environment at all, though. But uh, I'm sharing all this code up to GitHub, so you can read through it if you want to. There's a collection of constants up here to control like in increasing this number will make the spacing in the grid wider. Make that 64. Oh, come on. Yeah, it gets the, the actual blobs, that green outline gets a lot blockier.
you can control the 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 size of the blobs of the circles is kind of random, but between those two numbers for the radius, control the number of blobs, whether it shows the corners. Like toggling fill Rex to true. We'll do nothing, why don't well, I used to do something. I wonder if I disabled it. Hmm. That's funny. Must have disabled that one. But uh, you can get, get see some debug information here if you do this. Show the grid, draw the circles, show the corners. But you can see every time there's a, a corner, it's traveling along one of those grid lines. And there's some linear interpolation controlling where exactly between those points it's hitting. And let's try to interpolate it off. Apparently I did some work on this. Not that one. been over this code so many times. The only code that you can really count on is the most recent code. Might just re remove this whole section down here. I mean, if it's not going to work, then it's, there's not really much point in sharing it. The linear interpolation was the hard part to figure out. And honestly, I, I did a lot of like looking at how it was implemented in JavaScript and then translating it into something here. But I'm just going to leave that. You can fix it if you want to. <laughs> the part that I want to make work works. What was I thinking? It looks like I removed a lot of the debug code. That, that was yesterday, though. Core of this code. We have a blob class that basically tracks the circles. There's size, position, color, pen size, velocity. And there's a draw function that will update the position, like position equals rate times time, make sure it stays in bounds, makes it, this will make it bounce off the edge of the screen. And then if the draw circles, Feature is set to true, it'll then draw an ellipse right there. And then this reset samples turns the whole sample grid back to null. And when we're calculating a sample, we want to make sure that we haven't calculated it before, trying to save a little bit of time there. I'm not sure how much time it actually saves. But here's the equation. We take the right side of the equation, divide it by the left side of the equation, calculate the value of the equation at that point. When you when you do that, is this math is based on the website. You can plug other equations there easily enough, and it should still work. It's a little bit bigger. line function here, proxies, the built-in line function trying to, basically trying to make the code look a little more like the, the code I was, the JavaScript I was reading from. It just made it easier to, easier to translate linear interpolation. The big thing here is these cases, which basically should mirror these cases here. And that part I had to kind of plug in manually What's neat is that some of these cases mirror each other. Like you see, case six is a vertical line. Case nine is also a vertical line. So we don't have to implement 16 cases. We just have to implement like, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine cases. But all of that was so that what I really wanted to be able to do had more to, was more about graphing equations. 
back when I was in like like early high school. My geometry teacher, I think she was teaching geometry, pulled out a game called, it was called Green Globs. It was on a floppy disk yet. You had to boot your computer into it. But the premise of this game is that you would put some block green globs on a, on a coordinate grid and you had to write an equation that would intersect them. See if I can find a good picture. I cannot find a good picture. Looks like here's a, a newer version of the same game, though. There, you enter an equation to knock out as many globs as you can at one time. Point is points are based off of how many of these globs you can knock out, how few of equations. Found out that it's a trial and error that if you enter in a circle equation, you can actually knock out a bunch more of these globs all at once. But you gotta be able to plot the thing if you want to reproduce a game like this. I'm gonna walk you through the problem with plotting a circle right quick. So I wrote a little program here for the graph equations. We set up our the variables for our coordinate grid right here, or for the range. And we need a function that will transform something from the coordinate grid space into pixel space. Which is what this function is about here. And then these two proxy the pixel and line graphics functions so we can plug in our coordinate grid positions and it'll plot it correctly on the screen. And then after that, we have a couple of useless variables. Setting default line color, pen size, clear the screens, and the first step is just drawing the grid. So we get our coordinate grid, going from negative 10 to 10 along both axes. And it's like, by default, it's like, if you're going to plot a line, first thing you might try, y equals mx plus b, taking x from the minimum to maximum, and just set a pixel for every point along that range. And that would do this. You can see there's a dot for each of these. You can re increase the number of dots here, but it'll still look like a series of dots. And the way you get around that, instead of graphing a line with dots, you can graph a line with lines. So you can see here, our equation here is x squared minus 2. y equals x squared minus 2. So we calculate that for the current x position, and then we also do it for the x minus 1. So we have uh, to and from for our line. And instead of dots, now it's, it's connecting, connecting a line to draw the x squared minus 2. You can see the x minus 2 is what makes it down here, from 0, 1, 2, down the y-axis. So that's kind of neat. But uh, I really want to be able to graph a circle. Got x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If r equals 3, then y equals a plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus x squared. So that's the, the plus square root. There's the minus square root. And let's try graphing that with dots. And you can see there's dots here. Going to all goes all the way out here to the th to the negative three, because uh r is three. So it goes to three, minus three, plus three, minus three, and there's all your dots. Doesn't really look like a circle, because we don't have enough dots. So let's graph a circle with lots of dots setting our step along that range to 0.1 instead of 1, so we'll have 10 times as many dots. That looks more like a circle. It's, I mean, I don't like the fact that there's space between the dots. I don't, when you reach the edges, you have a vertical asymptote problem. I mean, how many dots are there between here and there? 
like you need exponentially more dots as you get to the plus as you get to the end of that range, basically. And there is my notes. You can never quite get enough dots to make the ends look complete. So let's try it with lines. Maybe we can solve it the same way we did earlier when we were graphing an equation. And we're doing it the same way, getting the, the y naught, the y1, the strong line between the two. The problem there is this. Graphing from the, I think, what is it, negative 2.9 to 3, you have a problem with the numbers going to infinity, and the lines just kind of drop off the edge of the screen. Looks more like a circle, but it's kind of hard to make those weird lines to go away. So what I did here is I took that margin squares algorithm out of the, the blob program and shoved it in here. There's the equation. X minus X naught squared, Y minus Y naught squared, and there's your R squared. You take the right-hand side of the equation, divide it by the left-hand side of the equation, and that will give you the sample. And everything else is just like I copied it out of the blobs program, removed some debug code. So you just have like getting the samples for the four corners, calculating the four points around those corners with the linear inter linear interpolation on the where appropriate, and then calculating which case are we at and drawing the appropriate lines. So you turn that on. Make that a little bit bigger. Okay, I wonder what will happen if I change this one to this. Hmm. No, that didn't help. Let's try to figure out how to make these jagged lines go away. There is a trick to it. I just have to play with the math to figure out exactly what it is. Change your radius to something bigger. There's something wonky going on with the uh, lines that wasn't happening yesterday. There. You set the Bridge resolution to one, then you actually get a reasonable looking circle that you're graphing. It's centered at minus three and positive two. Minus three on the x, positive two on the y. And there's the center. So, so yeah, I still need to do a little bit of work on this. Because I should be able to change this grid resolution and get a better looking circle instead of a choppier looking circle. It's choppier and smaller. So I'll keep working on it and I'm going to share this code so that, uh, I don't know, maybe y'all can find something fun to do with this also. But I, th I think it'd really be kind of neat to replicate that old Green Globs program and be able to fire little function lasers to blast blobs out of the sky. Now, being able to plot an equation, plot an equation of two variables is just a kind of an inter interesting challenge. But uh, yeah, just wanted to share that. It's something I thought was interesting. Maybe you'll find it interesting too. And that is all for today. See you.